Hi everyone and welcome back. In today's video, we are going to walk you through a hands-on lab setup for configuring and verifying IPv4 addressing on Cisco switches with VLANs. So in terms of devices that are used in this lab, we will be using a couple of switches and a couple of computers. In this hands-on session, we will walk you through the step-by-step -step process of configuring IPv4 addresses on Cisco switches along with the setup of a single VLAN. By the end of this video, you will have a solid understanding of how to assign IPv4 addresses to switches and ensure seamless communication within a VLAN environment. So without further ado, let's walk you through the topology first, and then we will look at the objectives of this lab, and then go through the lab tasks, and finally, walk you through the configuration steps. So first things first, let's talk about the topology first. So what you see on the screen is a couple of PCs that are connected to two different switches and each switch is then interconnected with each other for redundancy. So host one's fast ethernet zero interface is directly connected to switch one's fast ethernet zero one interface. Similarly with host two's fast ethernet zero interface is directly connected to switch two's fast ethernet zero one interface. So we also see that each switch is then interconnected with each other via a couple of links, and these links provide redundancy should a link fails to operate. So switch one is connected to switch two via fast ethernet 0, 23 and 24, and both of them are directly connected to fast ethernet 0, 23 and 24 on switch two, respectively. So the objectives of this lab is to configure and verify IPv4 addressing on these switches by using a single VLAN. We will need to make sure that host1 and host2 are able to ping every device in the network. And in order for us to do that, we would need to go through the lab tasks. So the lab tasks, as you can see on the screen, first we will need to connect to the switches and computers. Um, as per the topology diagram, and we will need to configure VLANs on both switches. We will create VLAN number 10 on switch 1 as well as switch 2, and we're going to assign names as well. We're also going to configure VLAN interface with the IP address that is mentioned in the table above, which is under this table, under the IPv4 address information. Also, we are going to assign each port that is being used in this topology to VLAN number 10. We're also going to verify each switch port is in the appropriate VLAN, and we are going to configure IPv4 address on host 1 as well as host 2. We also going to configure the default gateway for each of the hosts, and we will verify connectivity, and we're going to make sure that PC1 is able to ping PC2 by using the ping command. So if you look at the video description below, you will be able to see that I set the lab instructions so that you can go ahead and challenge yourself at your own pace. I also created a lab document for you to go ahead and download it so that you can challenge yourself by building the lab and go through the list of tasks yourself. I also have included the lab setup ready to go for you to configure. And I have included two different files, one for the pre-configuration and then the other one is for the post configuration. Okay, so now you can pause the video and go ahead and give it a try. Otherwise, you can just keep watching. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna start configuring the lab and I'm gonna go through the list of tasks. And if you could take a screenshot of what you see on the screen so that you can follow along with what I'm doing, that would be great. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to connect to the switch one CLI. Okay, so what I'm going to do next, I'm going to go through the steps. We already done step one by connecting to the end device that could be switch or it could be PC, et cetera, et cetera. And then I'm gonna jump into step two. So step two is changing the name of the actual switch according to the topology. So what I will do, I will hit enter and I will go to enable mode. And then I'm going to say configure terminal. 
And uh, in order for us to change the host name, I would need to say host name and then the desired name that you want to configure. In that case, we will say switch one and then I'm going to hit enter. And then we will need to do the same for switch two. So I'll connect to switch two as well. I'll go to the CLI interface and I'm going to go to enable and then config terminal. And then I'm going to say host name switch two and I'm going to hit enter. So the, the second task is completed now successfully. Now the third task is to configure VLANs. So we're going to start with switch one. And in here, what we are going to do, we are going to say VLAN 10. And we're going to name that VLAN 10 to VLAN 10. We will need to exit one level. And then at this point, we can go ahead and create the VLAN interface by issuing interface VLAN 10. And then we are going to configure the IP address by issuing the IP address. I'm going to say 192.168.0.100. That is going to be slash 24, which is 255.255.255.0. .255 .255 we also going to make sure that the interface has been enabled. So we're going to say no shot. Now that has been done successfully on switch one. Let's jump into switch two. And in here, we're going to do the same thing. We are going to say VLAN 10, name VLAN 10. We're going to exit one level. And then we're going to say interface VLAN 10. I'm going to say IP address 192.168.0.200 slash 24 or 255.255.255.0. And we're also going to make sure that the interface is enabled um, as well. By the way, any interface VLAN, it will be enabled or any virtual interface, it will be enabled by default. But I'm just going to do it anyway. So that is the third step that is now completed successfully. What we are going to do next, we are going to configure the switch ports and we are going to start with switch one first. And that task consists of four subtasks. Um, the first one is we are going to assign um, each port on the interface as per the topology into VLAN 10. And in order for us to do that, what we would need to do, we need to exit, first of all, we need to exit the interface um, config mode and then what we can do we can go to configure two interfaces at the same time by using the interface range command and in order for us to actually configure fast ethernet 0 23 and 24 we can say something like interface range and then we're going to say fast ethernet 0 23 hyphen 24 you can see here that the prompt has changed from config interface to config interface range. And at this point, what we can do, we can say switch port mode access and switch port access VLAN 10. Then what we will do next, we want to exit the interface range configuration mode. And then we want to go to interface fast ethernet zero slash one and we are going to do the same thing we're going to say switch port mode access and switch port access vlan 10. so at this point we will obviously have an error message or a syslog message uh, complaining about the vlan mismatch and that's because you have two switches that are connected with each other each side have vlan mismatch so one side is using VLAN 1 and the other side is using VLAN 10. That's why you see these two log messages. So what we'll need to do, we will need to do the same thing on the other side, which is switch 2. And what we'll do, we'll do the same thing. We're going to go and configure both interfaces, fast Ethernet 0, 23 and 24. And we're going to assign them into um, VLAN 10. So what we'll say, we'll say interface range 
past Ethernet 0 slash 23 hyphen 24. And then we would say switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 10. So at this point, we shouldn't get these the CDP discovery messages that indicates that there is a problem with the native VLAN. Now we can go ahead and configure interface fast Ethernet 01. So I would say exit. And then here I'm going to say interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 1. And I'm going to say switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 10. So what we'll do next is I'm going to go back to switch one and I will say end. And then at that point, I'll say show IP interface brief to begin with. You can see that fast Ethernet 01, which is directly connected to the PC or the host one, is in the up state and the protocol is up, which means layer one and layer two are good to go. And we also can see that VLAN is also in the up up state. And you can see that the IP address that we have assigned to is 192.168.0.100 as per the topology. So what we want to do next is we want to make sure that these three interfaces, which are the fast Ethernet 01 as well as fast Ethernet 023 and 24 resides in the right VLAN. And in order for us to do that, we would need to say show VLAN brief. And here you'll be able to see all the ports that are associated to which VLAN. And you can see here that we have VLAN ID 10. And the name of that VLAN ID 10 is VLAN 10. And the active ports at the moment that has been assigned to that VLAN are fast Ethernet 01, which is directly connected to the PC. We have fast Ethernet 0, 23 and 24, which both are connected to switch 2. This is how to verify that each port is associated with the correct VLAN, etc, etc. So we'll do the same thing for switch 2. We're going to say end. We're going to say show IP interface brief. Make sure that everything is working as expected. Fast Ethernet 0, 1 is in the up, up state. And... VLAN 10 is also in the up up state with the appropriate IP address 192.168.0.200. We also see that fast Ethernet 0, 23 and 24 in the up up state as well. And now what we are going to do, we are going to verify that all of these ports, the three ports, resides in the right VLAN. And we're going to do that by saying show VLAN brief. And again, we can confirm that. Fast Ethernet 01, Fast Ethernet 023, as well as Fast Ethernet 024 resides in the right VLAN here, as you can see on the screen. So this is task number five that has been successful. Now we move to task number six, where we are going to configure each host with the appropriate IP address and default gateway, etc., etc. So I'm going to do that next. So I'm going to go to host one first. And then I'll go to desktop, I'll go to IP config. And then in here, you can see that the interface has been selected as fast Ethernet 0. And in here, I would say 192.168.0.1. And the subnet mask is going to be slash 24, which is 255.255.255.0. And the default gateway, although this is optional, um, is 192.168.1, sorry, dot zero, dot 100. Now what we are going to do, we are going to verify this by going to the CLI and issuing IP config. And you can see that under fast ethernet zero, we can see that the IPv4 address is 192.168.0.1, subnet mask slash 24, and the default gateway is switch one. Now, host one is configured. So minimize that, go to the host two, do the same thing. So go to IP config. And in here, we're gonna say 
0.2. And again, the subnet mask is going to be slash 24. And the default gateway is going to be 192.168.0. Going to be one nine two one six eight dot zero dot two hundred. Now what we need to do is we need to verify the configuration. So we're gonna close this and we're gonna go to the CLI and here we're gonna say IP config and we can see the appropriate IPv4 address have been configured on the computer. And now it's a moment of truth where we move to step number seven, where we are going to verify connectivity. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to ping the default gateway first. And let's start with host one. So I'm going to say ping 192.168.0.100. That's the first test, which is the default gateway, which is the IP address, the management IP address of switch one, and I'm going to hit enter. And just to let you know that the first ping fails because of our request. So as you can see, the ping has um, was successful. And if I repeat that ping or repeat that test again, you can see that it is successful. Now, if we were to ping host two, we also can see that the ping is successful. Now the final test is to ping 192.168.0.200. And again, we get a successful ping. So that is host one. So I'm going to close this. Now let's move into host Two. Let's verify the connectivity as well from host two point of view. So we're going to say 192.168.0.200 to ping the default gateway first. And you can see that it's successful. We are then going to ping the management IP for switch one. Again, you get a successful ping, and then finally, we are going to ping host one. And the ping is successful. That's it, folks, for this video. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications so that you never miss our future tutorials and tech insights. If you have any questions, comments, feel free to drop a comment below. I read all your comments and I'm here to assist you. Remember, consistency and hands-on practice are key to success. Stay curious, stay inspired, and until next time, peace.